Come on, hey. Change my life. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my session. Flutter and GitHub, how open source changed my life. Well, I'm Kamal. I'm a GD in Flutter and Dart, a YouTuber and a mentor. Well, the session is not the usage session where you talk about or endorse about a technology or a tool. Here, I'm going to share my experience and the importance of open source and how businesses are adopting open source and also how it impacted my career and choosing one changed my life in building a sustainable products. So I believe that managing an open source project requires different demands and leadership. And it's very true. And it's completely changed my overall perception and working style towards open source project. I think if it's managed right, and if it is delivering an industrial strength system that meets user needs and provides solution, they are, which are fully extendable, maintainable over a long period of time, the resulting code is so much consistent and easier to manifest. So let's see what was my working style prior to open source. Definitely it was enterprise and closed project. In fact, I was quite content with it and definitely open source or closed source had a lot of pros and cons where you had strict guidelines and a very organized way of managing things, whether it could be designing documents or coding and testing or Avoiding, you know what, I, I feel that most of the enterprise organizations or softwares, they try avoiding taking risk as much as possible with a lot of approvals, rules, protocols. And finally, the information was always private. We had less number of info information being exposed. Some of the pros that I would say about an enterprise or an open source or a closed source would be good supportive system, user friendliness and unified experience. And I was pretty content with the style of working. Well, before I start dwelling into open source, let's see how and when did open source really start? If you see, it started way back in 1950 and 1960s, we had compilers being delivered as part of hardware purchase without separate fees. Wow, that's interesting. And in 1970s, we had software from IBM. In 1980, Richard launched GNU project. In 1990, we had the first version of Linux was introduced. Mozilla was started. Open source initiative was started. And 2000, we had Apache, which was developed and maintained by open source. We had MySQL, the first database. PHP, which was almost installed on more than 2,409 million websites and with 2.1 million web servers. And the software which we use day in and day out, WordPress, VLC player, Notepad++, Ubuntu, Android, Flutter, and the list keeps on going. So what does this all indicate? This clearly says that all companies are adopting open source and it's become the future now. So did you know, as per the survey, 44% of the organization are using open source as a resource or, or the, as the rescue operations. And companies have started changing the policy saying, do you have open source skills or have you contributed to open source rather than asking, are you expertise in a particular skill? So this kind of gives us a pinch that companies are really welcoming and adopting open source and the kind of impact it's creating in the market. So working in an enterprise or a closed project was absolutely fine with me. Until then, I realized that I was feeling constrained and kind of stuck and not flexible enough or I could not modify any features. One of the factors was the licensing or the pricing, which sometimes make me pull. And it does not allow me to get the creative side of me, where I was always kind of accepting whatever the existing feature was. So my journey started working on all phases. When I actually started working on all phases, all zones, all technologies, starting from web, mobile, cross-platform, and now focusing on building communities. I see most of us are under this preconceived, it's all free. 
No, when I say free, it's the freedom, not in terms of price. Well, I think open source is all about letting your creative So if you ask me now, okay, Kamal, okay, we got to know open source. We know that it's been started way back. Then how do I get started if you're a newbie? And if you're already working on it, good. But if you ask me where to start, first kind of look for the popular projects or languages on GitHub, where we get a monthly or a weekly report talking about how the projects are being performing. Types of projects. So projects could be security, it could be virtual reality, AI, um, or Flutter, or a simple text editor. You don't have to go for a complex project and choose a topic that actually interests you. Then look for the volume. Don't pick complex projects. Look for projects which are labeled as first time or easy beginner. Get the taste of it and then start getting your hands dirty with a complex product. Then, okay, fine, I got to know the project. Now what next? Start fixing the bugs or pull request or documentation. Trust me, documentation plays a very important role which most of the projects really lack in it. If you're really good at writing articles, documentation, why don't you start with one? Or it could be a clean code. Clean code doesn't mean to just remain the comments or cleaning up your code. I mean, trying to reinvent the wheel or um, instead of reinventing the wheel, try to fix the functionality of um, doing uh, various functions or something like that. So understand um, what this open source project is all about, how much time you need to spend on it, Potentially, is it used by how, who are the users or what are the problems that this project has been going through? So try to probe these kind of questions and then try working on the open source. Then what next? So you know what are the popular language and you know what to do. So there are many companies base their projects on free tools, uh, even though where there are high selection of free softwares. So I feel that instead of reinventing wheel, try to look for the softwares which are licensed, try to play around with it. And if you find any feature that could be actually open sourced, go ahead and do it. What's stopping you from doing one? And that's how my journey started into Flutter and GitHub really played a very vital role in achieving this journey to me. So if you ask me what Flutter is, Flutter is Google's UI toolkit for building this beautiful natively compiled applications for mobile, web, desktop from a single code base. Let me reiterate that point from a single code base. We recently launched Flutter 2 and it's the same code that ships the native code to five operating system. Yes, you just listened to me. I said five operating system, Android, Windows, Mac, Linux. And we also experienced targeting browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Edge. Flutter can be embedded in cars, TV, smart home appliances, providing most pervasive and portable experience for an ambient computing world. And you can see the beauty of Flutter in my next slide. So this was one of the projects which was developed uh, using open source, where we have all the aggregations of libraries built by the community for the community and it's purely community driven. You can see the libraries, you can the, see the entire code, you can see the pull request, you can see issues being tracked. So everything is free and open source and GitHub plays a very big role in getting this done. And these are a couple of open source sample projects created by developers like you and me, where this was built by the Rife tool. And then we had the um, animations and uh, the dragon. All this has been open sourced. Nothing is kind of proprietary or licensed. So these are the kind of work community is doing when we have these awesome tools like GitHub and we have Flutter SDK. And this is one more search tool, which is called the Dartpad, where you can directly on online, use the online browser to build these applications. All you need to know is just the Dart language and you're good to go. And then moving on, we also had sample plugins created by the community people where these all are kind of 
issues that we face in our daily life and we already have this ready-made plugins and user just has to plug in and use them and they are good to go. This is also open sourced. So Flutter, if you'd like to get connected, you can find ways to get connected. Twitter, GitHub, any way you will get connected with Flutter. And I think this is something that is also very important for building a very rich, awesome community. And we have one such community called Flutterista, where we are, if you're interested in joining one, um, it's actually, if you identify as a woman or a non-binary who have an interest in Flutter, join this community. It's been run by two awesome um, Flutterista, Daniel and Stephanie. If you want an invite, just let me know and I'll get, send you an invite and you can get connected. So another open source that I'm currently working is Application Lo Library Engineering Group. It is focused on building reusable application components that covers all platforms like Android, iOS, and Harmony. Yes, you heard it right. Harmony OS, it's an operating system designed for smart devices like smart TV, and it is being used as a mobile operating system. Here, we try to build libraries that support various fields, ranging from health, banking, IAM, media, music, you name them and we have it there. We are targeting an UI UX design to deployment reusability at each stage. And we are trying to minimize the R&D efforts in building the innovative solution in a popular middleware platforms. Our vision speaks our work and the process involved in building the first free open source community. And the structure of this reusable component architecture is pretty simple your functional definition, your multiple layouts, and your configuration part, whether it's an action handlers or it is an icon, and you at the end, you have the end results. If you'd like to get connected with this community, you can connect using all these channels and uh, free fields to contribute, open source, partner with us, and we'll be glad to have you. And yeah, that's it for today's session. I think uh, Open source is the future. We can see mobile, web, cloud solutions are increasingly built predominantly on open source infrastructure. Future architecture are highly to be based on open source. So what's stopping you from building one? Try it and see what wonders you can come up with. Thank you.